So why not jazz up some of our photographs by adding some nice creative borders around them? I'm going to show you a couple of different examples just how you can make some slightly more nice, neat, simple borders around an image and also some slightly more crazy and creative ones. Let's get stuck in. So let's start off with a nice, neat, simple border um, in this first example before we go into a slightly more creative one. I'm going to start off with this portrait that I shot a few years ago because um, it's nice and simple. It could almost work as a black and white image for really for a lot of the lack of color in the background and the clothing. But I think a nice, neat, simple uh, uh, outline to the image could sit quite nicely. So what I tend to try and do in this situation, I bring my layers panel a little bit closer here just so you can kind of see what I'm doing at the same time all in one space. I'm going to actually duplicate the layer. So to start off to do that, all we need to do is go to layer and then we go a couple of options down as duplicate layer. So what we may actually do, we'll just call this one girl. So this is going to be on the top and then obviously our original layer will then be underneath, which we'll just call border. So let's just go back to our girl layer here. Now if we go to edit, um, free transform it's going to allow us to actually change the size the perspective of the this top image all we want to actually do is just to shrink it make it a little bit smaller so if we hold down the alt key it keeps everything in perspective and it, it shrinks all the edges at the same size and same rate I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller here so now you can see we've got one version of the image that's a little bit smaller than another now we're going to return to our border layer here and we want to just put that out of perspective a little bit remove the clarity and add a little bit of a blur so our actual image our top layer here becomes the more obvious main element so let's go down to filter we go to blur and gaussian blur you can choose different types of blurs if you prefer but i'm just trying to keep this nice and simple so i'm just going to increase the blur rate around about 30 31 pixels or so now what we can do further from there to make it clear and obvious that we've got an outline is just actually darken our layer so to do so we can use a couple of different tools within the adjustments here but i tend to try and use the curves panel i think this is kind of the more efficient way of doing it and it gives us a little bit more control um, to access that you go through the image adjustments and then to curves and then all i'm going to do is just pull down this curve make it a little bit darker and you can actually see the background our border layer is getting darker so we're getting a more of a clearer separation between foreground and background but it still has those those grays those whites those black elements that feature within our main image so we still wanted to keep a little bit of the border tied to the actual image itself now again if you want to go a little bit of it one step further and just add another outline to our image here our girl layer just simply double click on your top layer and it brings up the layer styles options within that is the stroke the stroke basically adds a line now that line can be defined by um, the, the color you can increase the size of it the width of it and change the opacity of it as well how it actually appears straight away by default is actually pretty good but just to show you the options that you can change the size which is basically the thickness of the border I'm going to keep it around about three pixels or so we can then reduce the opacity of it if you prefer just to soften the effect of it slightly and then you can change the color it's almost at black here so let's just push it right into that bottom corner and make it fully black there but there we have it it's a really nice and simple and easy way of creating a border around an image by just shrinking one version of the layer and keeping a more blurred version underneath to create this slightly more jaunty modern look so we're going to put that to the side for one minute and we're going to go start again and we're going to do something much more crazy and a bit more creative so let's give this image another little edit, but this time we're going to do something a little bit more outlandish, a little bit more creative um, to, cre to create some sort of more quirky border, something a little bit more avant-garde. I'm going to start off by using the color picker tool because I love to be able to create borders that use the colors that are within the image. I think that's kind of quite important to make the border feel part of the image. It's not just an outline sitting on the edge. It forms part of the story, in my opinion, or at least it should do. 
So using the color picker tool from the vertical toolbar at the side, we're going to collect that there. And I think we'll actually use some of these darker areas around um, our model's trousers. So it almost seems black. I think it's almost like a brown color. So I'm just going to select that. So our um, color panels over at the side here on the left are basically both the same color. Now from there, we're actually going to add another layer on top. So let's do that by going to layer, new, and then layer and then let's just call this color so we've got a new layer on top but now we want to fill that layer with the color that we've been selecting from our models trousers so let's go down to edit and fill and then we can choose either the foreground or the background color because basically both of our color swatches down here are the same and that's going to fill. So it's it's basically like a brown color there. Now what we need to try and do is reveal our subject underneath now. And this is where the kind of the magic happens a little bit. So we can either use the erasure tool, but I tend to find that an adjustment layer, um, a layer mask, sorry, more specifically, would help us with that a little bit more clearly. So let's get our brush tool here. Now make sure that our color swatches are back to black and white. And now it's a case of picking our brush. Now normally the default brushes in Photoshop are just circles. You can either make them hard edges or soft edges, but you can then also get specialized brushes in terms of the effects that they create. I've got kind of quite a few myself that I've collected over the years. So I think I'm gonna maybe use some of these. I've got a few variations like stars, uh, ones for buildings, frames, etc., which could actually be kind of quite relevant. Um, but I've, I've got one here called Space Clouds, and I don't use this a lot. I think it's more specific for a certain type of kind of edit, but I do want to give this one a try and see if it works creatively within uh, this kind of edit, this border that we're creating. So I'm just going to select that there. I'm going to make it a little bit larger than its native size. And now what I'm actually going to do is just reduce the size of the brush slightly. Let's make our image a little bit larger on the screen. And now making sure that we've got our color swatches set to our black on the top here, not our white. Because remember, black is basically going to uh, reveal the, the image underneath or make our mask the top level here that we've got disappear. So whichever way you want to see it, black is what we need to reveal the, the image underneath. So with our brush selected, we're just going to click in random different places around this layer here to start revealing our model from underneath. And you can see it's giving this really nice, interesting border effect around her. Now it's important not just to kind of keep clicking around the image and then finish because all the edges in certain directions will look the same. So you can basically rotate um, brushes. You can change the directions of them a little bit. Literally, if we press next to the brush, there's a little file icon with a paintbrush symbol to the side. And this will bring us up lots of different options in terms of how the actual brush renders on screen. But the one we're specifically interested in is this circle here. Because as you can see at the very bottom, it's going to show us and change the direction of the brush itself. So let's just change it from here. So it's the same brush that we're using. And I'm making it a little bit smaller now, kind of adding more random patterns. So it means you don't have to necessarily change from using the same brush. You can just change the direction of it, change the size of it. And that somewhat will give a very, very interesting effect, let's say. Now you can use brushes that are a little bit more conventional. I like trying ones that are a little bit more avant-garde, ones that you don't necessarily think are gonna work but this is the art of creativity. Giving things like this a try, you never necessarily know how they're gonna work out together. Now this board is not gonna be perfectly even, it's not going to be symmetrical all the way around. There's gonna be some areas that seem to stick out a little bit more, others that are a little bit more closer to the edge of the frame. But that's what makes these borders kind of more non-conventional, a little bit more creative. Now I am finding a little bit that the, uh, the colors or the tones that I selected out initially must be in a very, very small area because they don't seem to gel in that well with the, the edge of the trousers of the model. So what I'm semi-tempted to actually do is just to go back to that layer, our color layer, and click on that brown color there and actually now make this a little bit darker. 
Now we can do that simply by going to image adjustments and then curves and we're just going to reduce the color in that layer there and actually pushing it more towards black. And let's just have a look at that image as a whole now. So you can see we've added that really kind of quirky border. We can go back to clicking on our layer mask and go back to the brush that we had. We've even got options now where we can choose different styles of brushes. Photoshop's brought up a load of different brushes that we've already got in our inventory and we can add and try and use some more. Some of us give us slightly more dappled effects that reduce the opacity a little bit more and seem a bit softer. So trying this out on your images is going to be really, really playful. It's going to be really fun. Sometimes you'll find it won't work. Sometimes it will work really, really well. It is really a creative tool just for you to kind of play around with and see where you feel it works best. It could be great for more dramatic portraits, street photography, some more abstract photography. It's just a way of being, add to, being able to add a little bit of personality into your photography. So it's simple as adding a new layer filling that layer with color and then using a layer mask to basically reveal with certain types of brushes. Now you can get these brushes online if you search for them. Some of them are payable, some you can even find for free. And it's really easy to install them into Photoshop and you can use them again and again and again. But I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial by adding some more quirky and creative borders to your photography. Hopefully you get to check out some more videos from iPhotography. Thanks very much for watching.